Hi. Hi. We're the Flippin' Weekend. A mother-daughter duo upcycling furniture every Saturday and Sunday. This weekend, we transformed this into this. We're so happy with how this piece turned out, and we're going to show you step-by-step step how we did it. While I was out for a run, I saw this dresser on the side of the road, and I instantly knew this was our next piece. I called mom right away. She jumped in the vehicle, came to meet me, and was just as excited as I was. We loaded it up into the car and brought it home. When we got the piece home, we quickly realized it was in need of some major TLC. The first thing we saw was that the bottom drawer likely belonged actually at the top. Now this is a quick and easy fix just rearranging the drawers, but upon further inspection we realized that the drawers were just all broken. They didn't glide and they were rubbing against each other. We also saw that there were some scratches and water rings on the top. The bottom looked like it was chewed by a dog and the veneer was also lifting. And to top it all off, there was no back to the piece. But there were definitely things we loved about this dresser. The mid-century modern design, which has made the ultimate comeback. The drawers, although broken, they were dovetailed and made of wood, which is a sign of great craftsmanship. And the tapered legs. More importantly, the cute little metal gold tips that were on them. We brainstormed and aligned on a creative vision. And although we are far from being artists, drawing it out always helps us stay on track and come up with new ideas. We decided on a deep olive green with dark wood accents and a texturized pattern on the drawers. Let's get started. With any furniture flip, our first step is always the same, disassemble and clean. We removed all the hardware, took out all the drawers, took off the bottom legs and the apron, and cleaned the entire piece with soap and water. Yes, it's not the most glamorous step, but after years and years of grit and grime building up, we want to make sure that the dresser is as clean as possible before we start tackling this project. Now let's fix the broken drawers. We noticed that the drawers were rubbing against each other, and especially when we put on a coat of paint, this is going to cause a lot of chips. So we used our oscillating tool to shave off a layer of the drawer, so they don't rub against each other anymore. We then took our sander to sand it down so it was nice and smooth. We noticed a few of the drawers were missing their guides. This is the little plastic piece that sits at the back of the drawer and helps guide it along its track so it slides in and out easily. We just ordered a big bulk pack off of Amazon. They're quite inexpensive and super easy to install. We were lucky to have a piece of backing board from another dresser, but you can always buy it at your local home improvement store. We only had to trim this piece a little bit for it to fit perfectly, and then we drilled some holes and tacked it into place with finishing nails. Remember the chewed edges and lifting veneer? Our next step is to fill all the holes and scratches with wood filler, so that when we paint it, it will come out nice and smooth. We're also going to be filling the old hardware holes in the drawers. We know we're using new hardware on this piece, and they don't perfectly line up with these existing holes. But in this case, we're going to be using spackle. It's a bit thicker, and since the holes are pretty deep, it will fill them better. Once the spackle dries, we usually go on top of it with another coat of wood filler. Now to prepare the trim that will be framing each of the drawers. We got these oak cutoffs that we'll be using as our trim from a local carpenter. But you can find something similar as long as they're about one inch wide from any hardware store. We laid them out to help us envision the pattern we're going to create. 
We measured from corner to corner and we're going to do a 45 degree angle to make the trim look a bit more cohesive. We made a little pencil mark to show which way the angle goes and where we should cut. We also measured the other side and cross checked it against the top and another drawer. Because sometimes with these vintage pieces, the drawers actually aren't all the same size. We put on our hearing and eye protection, set the miter saw to 45 degrees, and made our first cut. We flipped it over and made our second cut, then cross checked it against the drawer to make sure that it was the right length. That's perfect. We followed the exact same process for the smaller size trim as well. We used our pencil to mark out a 45 degree angle, cut it with our miter saw, and checked it against the drawer again to make sure it fit perfectly from edge to edge. Since we decided to fully paint the frame of the dresser, Mom did a light sand to scuff the shiny finish. She used a 120 grit sandpaper and this will help the paint stick better to the surface. While mom tackled that, I got started on hand sanding our oak wood slats that we just cut. Since they were already down to a raw wood, this was again a light sand using 120 grit sandpaper. The apron and legs needed to be sanded down to raw wood since we were planning to restain it. We like to use 80 grit, then move to 120 grit, followed by a 220 grit sandpaper to create a smooth surface. Don't forget to wash off the sawdust with a bit of water and let it dry. When sanding the legs, we realized that we could actually pop off the gold caps. It was a pleasant surprise since sometimes they're glued or even nailed to the leg. This allowed us to spray paint the caps much more easily. We chose a metallic rose gold for all of the hardware, which turned out to be the perfect accent against the olive green color. We're now going to stain and varathane all of the pieces that we'll be keeping as wood on the dresser. So that's the trim, the legs, and the apron. The process here is to apply a thick coat of stain and use another cloth to wipe off the excess. It's important to note that different types of wood will soak up the stain at different rates. So although our trim, legs, and apron are all light woods, they're actually all different types of woods. So you can see here when we did the apron, it's quite a bit darker than the other pieces. To offset this, we did two coats of stain on the legs and the trim so that it would be the same medium brown tone as the apron. Once all of the wood pieces were stained and dry, it's time to varathane. Varathane or polyurethane is a protective top coat that essentially finishes off the wood to prevent any scratching, slivers, etc. Similar to the stain, you want to add a fairly thick coat. We find it's easiest to apply it with a paintbrush. Now don't freak out. Most of the varathanes will come out white or even have a bluish purple tinge, but trust us, it will dry clear. Lastly, varathane comes in different sheens. Mom and I chose a satin finish for this piece over a gloss finish because we find that the satin finish gives a more rustic effect. We like to tape the inside edges of the drawers before priming. Even though you don't see the inside when the drawers are in, it gives crisp, clean lines that give the piece a more professional look. We're now going to prime the piece. We use high quality cabinet and furniture paint for our projects, and although most of our paints don't require us to prime in advance, we still do for two reasons. One is it adds extra adhesion to the paint, especially on surfaces that are a little bit shiny. Second is it saves on paint by reducing the number of coats that we have to do. Since this piece is a darker green, we used a tinted grey primer. For our main color, we chose a deep olive green. This is a super popular color right now and looks amazing with a medium to dark stain. Beauty Tone cabinet and furniture paint in a pearl finish is used on the majority of our projects since it has great coverage with a smooth professional finish. We bought a texturized paintable wallpaper for a subtle effect and painted the edges around the drawers where we were going to paste the wallpaper. 
we measured our drawers, cut our wallpaper to size, and followed the directions on the label. This was soaking it for two minutes and applying it to the surface. This wallpaper was a bit finicky and kept spewing glue out of the edges that we had to clean up. If you want to see more detail on how to apply wallpaper to your furniture, you can find the link to our how-to video below. Once the wallpaper dried, we did a few coats of olive green using our paint sprayer. We had to let the paint dry overnight and mom and I could not sleep because we were so excited to put the trim on the next day. We used wood glue to stick our pieces to the frame of the wallpaper and further secured the trim pieces by using finishing nails. Our pin nailer broke so we had to do this the old fashioned way. We clamped them down to keep them in place until the glue dried. Most of these vintage pieces are wood on wood gliders, which means they don't slide as easily as today's drawers. Before we put the drawers back in, we like to add beeswax. It acts as a lubricant to the wood, which helps the drawers move in and out seamlessly. We reattached our freshly stained apron and legs, as well as added our new rose gold metal hardware. And voila! We couldn't be happier with this mid-century modern transformation. The rich color combination, the subtle texturized pattern, the smooth gliding drawers, and the cute as a button little MCM tapered legs. Let us know what you think in the comments below. See you, See you next, next weekend! weekend.